Metal Jesus, I'm back again to do a review of a game I've been wanting to play for a long, long time. And if you know me, you know I am a rabid, drooling fan of the 1980s classic sci-fi movie, Blade Runner. This here is a special two disc, final cut version of it. I love this, it's one of my all time favorite movies. And you may not have heard of the game before, and that's because it only came out on the PC. It didn't come out on consoles. So the question is, does it hold up? I'm a huge fan. Is it worthy? Let's take a look. Blade Runner is a point-and-click adventure game by Westwood Studios for the PC, and it was released in 1997. Now, this is technically a side story taking place at the same time as the movie, so this is perfect for fans like me. The game takes place in a futuristic, I, I would almost say a far futuristic, 2019. If you remember, the original movie was released in the early 80s, and so... You know, 2019 sounds like a long ways away. And it takes place in Los Angeles, and Los Angeles has grown to be immense. And essentially, it's polluted, it's dirty, it's dangerous, and most people don't want to live there. The player takes on the role of a Blade Runner, and his name is Ray McCoy. He's a rookie policeman who must hunt down a group of replicants or bioengineered humans who are outlawed on Earth. Now, replicants are artificially created humans who are sometimes smarter, quicker, and often they're stronger than the regular human. But to control them, they have a built-in expiration date of about four years. And they aren't really happy about this, as you can imagine. Now, Ray is tasked with retiring these replicants as soon as possible as they're considered very dangerous to Earth's population. The interesting thing about the PC story is that it technically takes place at the same time as the movie. As a matter of fact, you will meet characters who have already interacted with the movie characters. So, for instance, when you go to the Tyrell Corporation and you meet Rachel and Tyrell for the first time, they will actually reference Decker, which was played by Harrison Ford in the movies. And they're kind of annoyed because they're being asked questions about replicants again. They don't know why. Now, I get the feeling that the developers of this game were huge fans of the movie because in addition to the characters, they also recreated many of the same locations that you see in the film, and they're just as beautiful. And also, they create new ones. So if you're a fan of the movie and you've always wanted to see more of that Los Angeles, well, this is the perfect opportunity to do that because they really nail that gritty, dirty, dangerous vibe of... Blade Runner the movie. Oh, those skin jobs got no respect for anything that truly lives and breathes. And that goddamn Eldon Tyrell ought to be zipped into a body bag and flushed into deep space. Get rid of him, we'd be out of a job. <laughs> I think we're all overdue for a little off-world paid vacation. You can stop staring at my ass now. You got eyes in the back of your head? All you gotta do is ask, Slim. <laughs> Now the gameplay is pretty standard adventure game fare. There were a ton of these in the the mid and late 90s. And so, you know, you do a lot of hunting and pecking with the mouse, clicking on certain things and uh, talking to a bunch of people. Very story driven. Not a lot of action, although there is a little bit. But the really standout feature here is that the gameplay world and story is randomized. So for instance, in this game, you're trying to figure out who's a replicant and who's not. And there's certain tools to help you do that. But every time you play, it's completely randomized who is and who isn't. So you'll run into shopkeepers that may or may not be human. And you'll run into people on the street. And uh, it's just, it's really wild. Actually, it makes following a walkthrough incredibly difficult. Another example of the randomization has to do with the characters that you meet and where they're located. So for instance, you may get a mission where you're supposed to go meet somebody in front of a store and get a clue to help advance the story. Well, the first time I did that, there was nobody there. And I didn't know why. I didn't I didn't know if it was because I did something wrong or maybe I didn't talk to somebody that I needed to talk to or I didn't have a specific item in my inventory to 
to make them appear. They just weren't there. And so I left the screen, came back, left it again, came back, left it, came back, <laughs> reloaded my save game. Finally, they just randomly showed up. So it can definitely lead to some frustration because it doesn't tell you and you have no idea if you're missing something because sometimes you are missing something. And so anyways, it's just a, a weird little quirk with this game. One of my favorite parts of the movie was the Esper system that Deckard used to analyze a 3D photograph and pick up clues. And thankfully, that same system is in this game and it's so much fun. Now, to give you an idea, I guess in the future, when you take a photo of something, it's not just capturing what is directly in front of the lens, it's actually taking a full 3D snapshot of the area. And so this tool allows you to technically move the camera around, you know, maybe an object or a person and see what's behind them, see what's underneath them. It's actually pretty cool. And I, I enjoy that quite a bit. The PC game uses some interesting technology for the graphics. You may notice that the backgrounds are pre-rendered and they look fantastic. You know, they're a little pixelated, but for the time they are pretty decent. And then for the characters and some of the models, it's actually using a voxel technology. Now, the advantage of voxels is that you can technically pump out way more detail on a fairly low-end PC. As a matter of fact, this game does not require a 3D accelerator card. It doesn't use polygons at all. So for the most part, it's a, it's a pretty decent looking game, I think, as far as the visual go. Although sometimes when the characters get really close to the camera or you know to the to the player, eh, not not so great. Fans of the movie often debate, is Deckard, played by Harrison Ford, and he's the main character of the movie, is he or is he not a replicant? And the movie doesn't really definitively answer that, although there's a lot of hints leaning towards maybe he is a replicant. However, the game gives you that option. As a matter of fact, there are 12 different endings to this game, so it's made to be played multiple times. And the way that that's handled is that when you meet some of the main characters in the game, you can interrogate them to discover if they are human or a replicant. And at that point, you're given a choice. Do you retire them, which is basically to kill them, or do you sympathize with them? And the game storyline takes its path based on that and even towards the very end of the game you get to decide your fate and each time you play through it it's a little different and it's it's very cool that way however as a story i don't think it completely works one of the problems with it is that it doesn't really pick up until after chapter three the first couple chapters i just felt were really kind of rehashing the movie after chapter three when you get into the Replicant Underground, things start picking up. The other thing I wasn't really crazy about was the whole randomized structure of the game. Now, I know they're going for multiple playthroughs, and the game is relatively short, so it kind of supports that. But it drove me crazy trying to figure out where the characters were and why they weren't there. As a matter of fact, there's one character, Lucy, I never met, and I don't know why. I mean, I reloaded my game, I left, I did other missions, came back, and she just wasn't there. She wasn't key to the to the entire plot, but she she was required for one of the better endings, and I was kind of disappointed that, for whatever reason, the time I played the game, I wasn't able to meet her. So that's my review of Blade Runner for the PC. Not a perfect game, but I do believe if you are a fan of the movies, you should definitely check it out. It's it's a great quality game, and it's cool that it takes place during the movie so well. Plus, with so many options and so many ways to play it, you kind of get to make it your own. It's, it's fairly unique that way. All right, I want to thank you for watching my channel, and thank you for subscribing. Take care.